All right. Well, I know what you're all thinking. Um, you're probably thinking, you know, I must be crazy to think that fixed assets are fun. But in my experience with Acumatica, I think they've never made um, managing fixed assets easier. So what was already great about it? Uh, the ease of creating new assets, splitting assets, disposing of them, increasing or decreasing the values quite easily, and the ability to handle multiple depreciation methods accurately and with ease. Specifically, there are 556 depreciation methods built in with the ability to create your own if you can't find something in there you like. So those of you that know me and have worked with me know I'm not a fan of touching work more than once. If we can address our work as it comes in and deal with it and get it into the ERP system and touch, the first time we touch it, uh, there's greater efficiency and visibility and also less chance for errors. In 2021 R1, an already great application has been made better by solving a critical business issue I've seen a couple of my customers face. And it also creates the ease of workflow and efficiency of addressing our work as it comes in that I really love. Today, I'm gonna to demonstrate how we can manage new construction assets that are in process, but not yet in service. Because the asset's not eligible to be depreciated until it's placed in service, this new feature allows us to continue to accumulate the expenses and reconcile them against the fixed asset and then place it in service when the time comes. So to start off, I'll just <clears throat> show the fixed asset class. Um, they've added a new checkbox here uh, called under construction. So when that is considered under construction, uh, we are allowed to take care of all these fun features that are involved. So I'm just gonna create a new fixed asset here. I'm gonna build myself a new 10 stall barn because what girl doesn't need more barns? And I'm gonna select this new asset class that I had just built. <clears throat> and by doing that, um, it kind of pulls in my asset type already. And I'm gonna put my receipt date in. So that receipt date uh, should be the date that I'm starting this construction project. If you're at all familiar with the fixed assets, you know a placed in service date is required, but with this fixed asset class, it is no longer required at this time because we may or may not know when we're going to actually place this in service, especially with new construction, who knows when that could happen. So I'm gonna put a uh, cost on there, what, what this new barn is gonna cost me. And, go ahead and save that record. So at this time, I'm gonna remove it from hold. Being, taking its time here to take off hold. Now, this asset is now active. So that means I can take advantage of some of the things that are available under the actions menu. But you see the calculate depreciation is completely grayed out. So we cannot depreciate this asset because it's not yet in service. But what's great about it too is that we can take care of other, um, other actions against it. Uh, we can dispose of it should it not come to fruition, suspend it, reverse it, um, split it. Maybe we need to split a piece off um, of that. So now that I've got my asset that's going on, <clears throat> I can come in here to my reconciliation tab and I can start to reconcile some of these AP expenses that have started to come in against this asset. So as we're going along, I could go, you know, the bill comes in, I enter my AP bill, that goes into AP, and it comes into my fixed asset accrual account, and it pops in here, and I can start to select these transactions and reconcile those against this fixed asset. So as I do that, we start to see, you know, the accrual balance and the unreconciled balance starting to kind of take it off there. So that gives us a lot of visibility as to where we're at on that project. So more bills come in, we go ahead and take care of all this and I'm gonna go ahead and process the rest of this through and reconcile the rest of my expenses against this fixed asset. So at this point, you see I have an unreconciled balance. I can come over to my general settings and change that to $2,000. 
change my acquisition cost. <clears throat> and we should be in pretty good shape. At the, oh, and I, and I need a place to insert this date. So I'm going to say today my barn is done. Okay. So now I need to place this asset into service. And in order to do that, I need to use the transfer form and I need to transfer this asset from a non-depreciable class to a class that I can depreciate on. So I'm gonna do that. And when I do that and I start to filter it down, it's only showing me the assets that are eligible to be transferred into this new class. So it filters that for me. But what's also nice is that when it's in the class that's under construction, it will never show up in the list to be depreciated. So at this time, I would select my asset and process that. And what's nice about this too, is that when I do this and I come back over to my fixed assets, my fixed asset number doesn't change. So it doesn't move it into a new, a new asset, just moves it into that asset class. So at this time now, I'm able to calculate depreciation against it. And if I look at my depreciation history, I can verify that everything is there. And you see the, the month I started it, the depreciation is zero. And the month I place it in service, because I have a mid period, it kind of goes forward from there and, and depreciates it out. And I just chose a straight line depreciation method for that. So this functionality really allows our users to better manage their workflow by addressing and re the reconciliation as it's happening. Instead of setting it aside, putting it in a folder and coming back to it and coming back to it, uh, we, can, we can just keep working on our things, address them when they come in and move forward. It also gives a greater visibility to the project managers and the management, and it collects data that can be used for KPIs or other metrics that the business may need. So see, wasn't that fun?